Florida State, Georgia Tech, they open up the college football season here this weekend. So let's talk quarterbacks. Let's talk about who has the advantage at the quarterback position. If you would have asked this question a year ago, you would have said DJU and not Haynes King. But now I think it's a lot closer than maybe people realize unless you're following each program. So let's talk about Haynes King. Let's talk about DJU. And let's talk about who has the advantage at quarterback and what each quarterback needs to do for their team to win. So again, this isn't going to be like a full team breakdown, offense, defense, offensive line, defense line, just a quarterback breakdown, just what each quarterback needs to do to help their team win this this game. If this is your first time tuning in to the QB Spotlight channel, sincerely thank you. We're just a big quarterback hub. We talk all things college quarterbacks. We're going to do these quarterback breakdowns throughout the season, and we'll also have a quarterback show uh, weekly, two times a week that we'll be diving into quarterback so if you like that type of stuff please like share subscribe all that youtube stuff let's talk about haynes king first georgia tech quarterback a guy i'm somewhat biased towards just because he's a texas kid i'm in texas so i i, fo I followed him through high school and his time at AM. when he went to AM, i thought he was going to i was going to hit right but injuries and just some inconsistent play led to him potentially or eventually transferring to georgia tech where he was the quarterback last year's first year as a full-time starting quarterback the entire season I thought he played a lot better than given credit for. He led the ACC. I know he led the ACC in interceptions, but he also led the ACC in touchdowns. He had over 600 yards on the ground and 10 touchdowns on the ground as a runner, which was second for any quarterback in the in the ACC. And you, you, you had several highly mobile quarterbacks in the ACC last year, and he was the top third. I think he was the third quarterback in, in rushing yards last year. Not only was, was that, but – he was able to show that he could be healthy for a full season and led Georgia Tech to a pretty good season last year. So I think I think Haynes King is a big reason why we're seeing this this betting number, if you're in that type of stuff, go from 13 and a half to 11 and a half right now, depending when you're watching it. Maybe it even gets down lower, right? So depending who you like, that could give you an advantage. But what's the biggest thing Haynes King needs to do? We, we talked about him last year as the first year as a starting quarterback and having some success, right? Obviously, you want him to take that next step forward. And how do you take that next step forward? Well, it's coming against Florida State and it's taking care of the football. If you take care of the football, I feel pretty confident you're going to be in this game when the fourth quarter rolls around. Last year, we talked about, you know, he had 16 interceptions that led the whole, it led the ACC in interceptions. But one of those games, he had four picks. Another one of those games, he had three picks. He had four games with double digit picks. But, but out of those games, if you take away, Though the game that he had four picks, I think it was Clemson, and the game that he had three picks, that's seven interceptions. If you can just limit that to one, as opposed to the snowball effect happening, those interceptions are a lot, a lot lower. So avoiding interception, but if you do make a mistake, avoiding that snowball effect. Because against Florida State, you give them more opportunities, even though not the same team they were last year. It's going to be tough for Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech to to win. So that that, that that's number one. Take care of the football. No interceptions, and you most likely have a shot in the fourth quarter. If you do throw a pick, just avoid that snowball effect right number two utilize your legs if you're haynes king that that's one of your best parts of your game is you're a good athlete right and even if you don't have 100 yards on the ground against florida state if you use your legs enough that's going to get the defense thinking it's going to get the defense maybe look in the backfield a bit more and then you can take some some more shots through the air but i think if you can have some success early with his legs on the ground that can help open up the passing game and maybe help reduce the chances of throwing interception that's number two number three like, like selling out to win this game, whatever you have to do to win this game, show everything on film, show whatever you need to show on film. Who cares? Don't try to hide anything to win this game. If you can win week one, Florida State overseas, that's a huge, huge position for Georgia Tech to be in. So to wrap up Haynes King, what does he need to do well? Well, you want to continue to improve on last year, right? But take care of the football. No interceptions. If you throw a pick, avoid that snowball effect. Number two, utilize your legs. You're one of the best athletes at quarterback in the ACC. Utilize those legs. Number three, sell out to win. Show everything you can on film. That's maybe more coaching advice. Not that you want any coaching advice from me. I'm just some guy on YouTube. But you want to sell it to win this game. All right, let's talk about DJU. He, he's obviously way more covered than, than Haynes King, a, a lot more experience. Uh, but I did think we saw some good things last year at Oregon State. Now, some was the exact same, like, like his accuracy, completion percentage, um, this somewhat inconsistent play was, was the exact same, which isn't necessarily great, but it is what he is right now, right? Something he does do pretty well on is taking care of the football. His TD to interception ratio, his last year starting at Clemson was three to one last year at Oregon state. It was a little bit better than three 
to one, right? So that's encouraging. That's good. But where I saw him take the biggest step last year was his yards per attempt. He pushed the ball downfield more in Oregon State's offense than in Clemson. I think his first year starting at Clemson was, what, 2021, right? First full year. I think his yards per attempt were like six something, low sixes. And then in 2022, his last year at Clemson was like 6.8, give or take, right? I might be off by a little bit, but it was below seven, sub seven. Last year was 8.4 at Oregon State. So that shows me he was a bit more comfortable pushing the ball downfield than whether that was the offense or him, probably a little bit of both, I think it's fair to say. But you want to see that carry over to, to Florida State, right? So push the ball down, downfield. Let's talk about how, how DJU can influence this game. I think, number one, you take what the defense gives you. Take what the defense gives you. You have the superior talent. You don't need to make any unnecessary type of throws, and, and hopefully – and, and taking what the defense gives you, it leads to bigger it leads to bigger plays. Take what the defense gives you. Don't force anything, right? You don't want to keep Georgia Tech in the ballgame, especially if Haynes King gives you a turnover or two. If you just take care of the football, you're probably going to win. You're probably going to be in a good position. Number two, this is going to sound counterintuitive, but I still want to take a few shots downfield. I think in doing that, it's going to help you take what the defense gives you. It's going to give you some more underneath type throws. So if, if, if you're DJU, while you don't want to have any risky type throws, maybe, you know, unnecessary throws, I th still think if you get one-on-one -on -one matchup, if you get something where safety is leaning over to one side, you can take a shot downfield on the, on the other side. You take that through DJU. You, you want to push the ball downfield enough where Georgia Tech has to be aware of that. I think in doing that, it's really going to help open up the underneath throws and help DJU take the defense. Gives you the number three is, is kind of um, – kind of on the whole offense in general, but involves DJU. So last year, DJU was much better going, uh, throwing off play action than he was on straight drop back throw. So against play action, he had 11 touchdowns, two interceptions. His completion percentage was 62 and a half and his yards per attempt were 10. So very good numbers off play action, right? <clears throat> Whenever he wasn't using play action, so just a straight drop back pass, he had 10 touchdowns, five picks, not bad. Only 7.2 yards per attempt. So it was under the average of the entire season. <clears throat> Excuse me. And his completion percentage was 53%. So that tells me he's much better whenever he has help getting defenses out of position. Some guys are schemed open. He's able to be much more accurate. More than almost 10% of his completion percentage was improved on play action. His yards per attempt were about three yards deep, which is huge off play action. And he had more touchdowns and less interceptions off play action. So that tells me if Florida State can get the running game going, that's going to help DJU get comfortable. It's going to put him in a better position, showing what he's more comfortable in, the type of throws he's more comfortable in making, and that's off play action. So get the run game going if you're Florida State so you can utilize what DJU did good last year. That was passing off of play action type type throw. So I think that's I think that's how you win if you Florida State. In theory, Florida State should be able to beat Georgia Tech without showing too much. Man, if you're a believer in Georgia Tech, they're, they're kind of like one of these darlings right now in the college football season. And if you think Florida State is down, this is a very could be a very close game. So with that said, just to recap, DJU took the defense gives you, pushed the ball downfield selectively, but you still want to do it. And then hopefully you get the run game going. You can use some passing plays off play action to get you comfortable. With that said, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Right, we got Haynes King, DJU. Who has the advantage at quarterback? I don't think it's. I don't think it's definitely DJU. I think it's pretty close. Right. So let me know your thoughts. Who has the advantage at quarterback? What do you think each quarterback needs to do for their team to win? Again, I understand it's eleven v eleven. There's special teams involved. There's a lot more than just a quarterback breakdown that that needs to be done to have a full understanding of who you think is going to win this game. But we're a quarterback channel, so we just want to focus on that one position. But again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And again, if you like this quarterback niche type content, please like, share, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. It really does help us. Follow us along. We'll see you next time. Peace.